Good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to the MIT presentation. First of all, let me thank you all for coming here today. As Xavi say, I'm Afram, a researcher at the BSC. Uh, with my colleague Raúl Torres, we are going to present the MIT project. So, the outline of this talk is showing this slide. First, I'm going to talk about what is MIP, the a briefly overview. Next, I'm I will talk about the project structure. I will follow with the design of the accelerator we are working on, ACME. Uh, the, I will continue with the emulation platform. And uh, finally, I will talk about the roadmap of this project. So let's start. What is MIP? MIP stands for uh, Mare Nostrum Experimental XSK Platform. Um, uh, what does it mean? Well, MIP is a digital laboratory that provides a future environment for full stack, co design, and pre silicon operations. So MIP provides two very important functions. The first one is an emulated platform of Presilicon's IP blocks and ideas, and also uh, MIPS enable a software development for uh, before the hardware is available. So, the main objectives of MIP are develop, design, and deploy an FPGA emulated platform, and it will include an FPGA infrastructure that provides a memory and connection interface uh, with the whole CPU, uh, CPU, yeah, and the other FPGAs. We also uh, work uh, building FPGA tools to support and map an accelerator into the FPGA emulator emulation platform. And finally, uh, we explore and develop a, a software tool chains for RISC V architecture accelerators uh, in order to test in a high performance computing um, high performance computing or high performance data analytics applications. So how how we, are we going to achieve our goals? Well, by providing the following elements. First, MIP will deliver a family of IP blocks. It could be open source when it's possible, and it can be integrated into, a, into the accelerators or cores for traditional or emerging HPC applications. We also have the MIP FPA shell that provides, a, it's, well, it is composed for several IP blocks, and it has a communication interface and also a system to access to the memory. MIP is looking for a general and high performance interface at the boundary of the MIP FPA shell and also to the accelerator package that we can reuse in many other projects. The next element is the accelerated compute and memory engine. This is our emulated uh, platform, no, emulated accelerator, sorry. And this is uh, based in the RISC V architecture and it will help us to validate the whole infrastructure we, we are working on. And I also uh, have to mention, uh, as MIP, uh, many other projects uh, need to be uh, early investigation before the implementations. For that reason, uh, MIP proposed Coyote. Coyote is a very powerful simulation tool that strikes in the balance of the simulation throughput and the fidelity of the results uh, from the systems that we have. And then with the platform, with this final platform, we can provide, a, a, we can develop and test in different HPC or HPDA applications and run into the ACME architecture. So what is the relation of the MIP with the Mare Nostrum 5? Well, once a MIP infrastructure is complete, a, we can connect it with the Mare Nostrum 5. So I will have a, give you a, a brief overview about Mare Nostrum 5. Mare Nostrum 5 is a new supercomputer that is hosted in the in, in Barcelona Supercomputing Center. Uh, it will be available by the end of this year, we hope, and it will have a peak of performance of 200 petaflops. And yeah, uh, what else? Uh, it will include a full technology uh, developed in Europe. So, what is the purpose of MIP? Uh, once uh, we complete the, uh, the whole infrastructure, uh, we can uh, run uh, several applications or jobs in the FPGA infrastructure, uh, providing this way uh, even a higher uh, resources to the facility. So, um, okay, and uh, how we're going to organize the, the work? We have three different uh, groups. The first one is the uh, software group, and this uh, handles to identify the different HPC, IA, HPDA applications that we can adapt in the uh, self-host accelerator. 
and among other things, they also uh, developed to uh, different two chains uh, to run these applications into the emulated accelerator. The next group is the hardware, no, so, yeah, the hardware group. Uh, this group uh, it handles to design and uh, develop the ACME architecture. They uh, define the architecture, they produce the RTL, and also uh, they verify the RTL that match with the specification. So the ACME um, architecture layer, they uh, define the different components, their functionality, and the connectivity among of them. And finally, we have the FPGA group. Uh, we have to see this uh, as a logical layer that uh, allows to adapt the real characteristic from the physical infrastructure we are working on with the uh, accelerator we want to map using the different uh, software stack for the HPC and HPDA uh, applications. So you can see here the co-design laboratory as I mentioned before. And now we have the ACME architecture. As I mentioned before, uh, we want to bring a design of accelerator that provide, uh, that is based in the European RISPI processor. So uh, here you have a high level perspective of this architecture. This is AGME. As you can see, uh, we have two different uh, tiles, uh, but we can distinguish uh, two, these, uh, two these types. Uh, first, we have the compute engine for, memory, uh, for compute operations, and also we have the memory uh, engine for uh, memory operations. So I have to highlight that uh, uh, AGME have a very important characteristic that is it is a disaggregated architecture, that it means that not all the computations lies on the same place. We have two different places. The first one is uh, the compute engine, that, for example, we can handle the arithmetic operations. And also we have the memory engine that we uh, it handles to the smart data movement between the, 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 the architecture. So it will help us to uh, that the system will be over that the system won't be overloaded and the performance of the accelerator will be better. So I will start explaining the main elements of the uh, the compute engine. Here we have the bus style. The bus style is at the vector and systolic accelerator type. It is a cluster of eight systolic uh, eight scalar is five cores and each core have a uh, several coprocessors. The first one is the vector processor unit. The second is the systolic array for video and image. And the last one is the systolic array for neural, net <laughs> neural network. So uh, what I have to mention here, the more, uh, most important characteristic is that the bus type has a, a private L1 uh, cache, and also they share the L2 data cache. And uh, for example, for the scalar core with the uh, coprocessor, they share an interface that is called the open vector interface. And uh, if you can see here, uh, we have a NOC that helps us to connect the memory type with the bus type. And it helps us to facilitate the memory operations, the coupling the access, and execute the operations also. So uh, the next element, uh, is the memory tile. The memory tile is the another type uh, tile we have in AGME. And uh, this uh, will only compute the memory operations and the start, um, I'm sorry, um, the smart data movement between the memory tile, no, the memory and the bus tile. So it will help us to alleviate the memory operations to the compute engine uh, in this way. Uh, we can, um, improve the, the performance of the system. Uh, well, I will enumerate the different elements we have in the memory type. First one, we have the memory controller. We have also a slide of the HBM. Uh, we also have a GLTLB for other transactions. And finally, uh, the main element you, you can see is the MCPU. The MCPU is the, uh, the central element of the memory type, and we, we can say of this is the, the reason that we can say we have a disaggregated um, architecture 
because it handles to the, the smart data movement between the all the system and the main goal of this is to um, try to reduce the useless uh, data movement uh, between the uh, the whole uh, hierarchy so um, we will use a, a standard a RIS 5 um, processor without a uh, float and points units and uh, these blocks um, will <coughs> optimize uh, this, uh, this part uh, memory bound applications. But uh, as you can see, this is the first approach we have for the memory type. So uh, we, we will add uh, more capabilities for this, and we will still working on to improve it. So um, here you can see. Uh, the most important characteristics that we have in the ACME architecture. As I mentioned, we, we have a disaggregated uh, architecture and we have two different elements, the compute tile and the memory tile. And you can see in this column, uh, this is all the main elements of each tile. And we can provide the different um, features as, for example, we provide a, a specialized accelerators for vector operations the historics array, and we can provide also uh, custom instructions. And for the memory type, we can provide, uh, for example, the smart data movement or a smart memory addressing. So uh, this is the high level perspective of the ACME accelerator. And what we can provide with the different types that we are working on. So I can uh, continue if I can mention what is Coyote. Um, Coyote is a, a simulator of microarchitecture, and it is a very powerful simulator that uh, provides a different mechanism as a performance analyst, uh, analysis, um, a design exploring, and also help us to validate the, the system before the implementation. So, is Coyote is based in two pre-existing simulators, Sparta and Spike. Um, and it also, it is an uh, execute event and driven, and uh, it is uh, focusing in the modeling the data movement throughout the memory hierarchy. And uh, we can say this is flexible, this is uh, scalable because we can use, use it for only one uh, core, and also we can use it for many cores. And we can say it is extensible because uh, we can add, add <coughs> I'm sorry, uh, we, I can add or um, we can add, sorry, and, and add more capabilities uh, uh, depending the, the system we are working on. So yes, the, we are very proud of this simulator. Um, I can continue. So. Uh, this is uh, the fraction of the, the last validation we want to do. This is the main element uh, of the uh, bus type that we are working on. Um, uh, the idea is to map in the, into the FPGA infrastructure, and I will show you with more details in the next slide. So uh, we have here the emulation platform, uh, the idea we have two different uh, infrastructure uh, according with two different phases. The first one is the phase uh, one. The phase one, uh, we have been working with a few Alveo cars. We start working with a U280 cars and, <clears throat> and we, we use it for a validate different uh, communication protocols. And also uh, the idea is to grow it up to and many um, multiple FPGA system. Um, for that reason, we started at the more lower level. And now uh, I will show you the most important elements uh, of each phase. Uh, well, I mentioned we use the U280 uh, Alveo cards. Uh, we validate different uh, communication protocols. As for the remote communication, we validate uh, Ethernet, and we also for the FPGA to FPGA, we validate the Aurora protocol. 
using the QSFP uh, connectors. And uh, we use a uh, D-Rain communication to validate this whole infrastructure. And the next element, well, the next phase is in the next phase two. We use a different uh, platform. Uh, in this case, we use the U55 uh, uh, alveo card. And the idea uh, we change this is because we have uh, uh, more resources and we have a, a better stack memory with the HBM memory. Yeah, the HBM memory. And also we don't have here the DDR uh, memory uh, work. So this tender will be uh, available in June. And the idea is to use uh, at least a 96 FPGA. So uh, we want to use it uh, in 12 servers. Uh, and each server will, be, will have eight uh, FPGA. So this is the FPGA MIP FPGA shell. Uh, this is a flexible, a configurable uh, wrapper for the AGME accelerator or any other accelerator. This is very important. Uh, I enumerate the different uh, communications interface that we have here, uh, we have been uh, implemented. And in this picture, I will um, uh, summarize the, 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 the things we have been uh, developing. Uh, in the most outstanding ring, we have the PCI macro. This is for the host communication with the host CPU. Yeah? And the most concentric ring, we have the remote uh, communication using the Ethernet. <clears throat> and also, we have the FPGA to FPGA, point to point communication using Aurora protocol. And in the most inner, uh, the innermost uh, ring, we have the old logic where we are going to map or emulate it accelerator. So uh, here you have a big uh, perspective. Uh, what is, what I I'm been mentioning the last slides. Uh, this is um, the idea is to map a slide of the AGME architecture. Uh, we can map all the architecture because uh, we depend on the FPGA resources. So the idea is to replicate the different slides in the in the all the multi multi FPGA infrastructure and map it in, into the MIP FPGA shell. And we will use the different communications interface that we have been working on. And in this way, we can um, execute different benchmark. Um, we can uh, try to uh, check the, the, the performance and yeah, try nice stuff. Yeah. And finally, I have here the roadmap. Well, uh, as you can see, I can start the bottom up approach. Uh, we have been working uh, finding the scalar core, um, implementing the different coprocessors, and finally uh, implement the bus type for the compute engine side. And now we are working on implementing the, uh, the memory tile, and we are focusing in the MCPU. And in the case of the hardware platform, uh, we have been uh, working uh, also, we have implementing the, the different communication protocols. We have uh, the PCI, the FPGA to FPGA communication, we have also provided HBM uh, memory uh, controller for the memory type. And we have also validated into the phase one. Now we want to complete this, uh, all the steps using the phase two. And the idea is uh, to have it by the end of the June of this year. So, and last one, we have the, uh, the roadmap with the uh, software and the hardware. Uh, the software uh, side, they have been working with the different tools that help us to validate the, and run and develop the different applications for the HPC and HPDA in, in using the emulated platform. So yeah, this is the idea what we, ha we have been working on. Um, and that's all for my side.